Uh, so I carried on working with a, with a village level uh, data set. We decided to do it for 10 years in six villages in India and we followed the households during those 10 years and interviewed them every three weeks. And the core concept was a resident investig investigator. And that's what made everything, everything real and doable. Earlier, what we had was not only the, the collection of, uh, on a regular basis of longitudinal data, panel data, on a routine basis, but we also had many special purpose inquiries which were fueled by research questions, such as uh, what, what is conditioning stand establishment of pearl millet in the village? Uh, and researchers would actually go out to the villages and farmers' fields and measure these things. And we also had many on-farm trials in the villages uh, with farmers that weren't in the, in the, in the initial sample that were also, that, that were also interested uh, in, the, in, in the village studies, and we tried to spread the benefits of the village studies through all the farmers in the village and, and, and to, to incentivate not only the households who took their precious time every three weeks to answer questions, usually in the evening to us, but also other farmers, so we had broader, more widespread support in the village. And that way you can, you can generate quick and clean information uh, for de decision making on constraints and also on demand for technologies and subsequently what will be the impact of those technologies over time. And you get to know the people too. Uh, I remember one of the more interesting stories was one of the young girls in the resident investigator's office used to come in and take her, her pencils from the investigator all the time and she was a, uh, a daughter of a, of a, of a farm household, a, a, a dad, a father, who worked as a toddy tapper. Toddies are palm trees here, and they're a, a, a lower caste occupation. But this girl eventually went on and became the mayor of the village. And so when I saw her after 20 years, after the village studies had stopped in 85, and then we renewed them again, thanks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, 2008, I went out there for the first time in 15, 15 to 20 years, and I, I saw her then as a, as a young woman who was the ex-mayor of the village, and it was, it was very interesting. You see things like that, I can't help but be, help but be impressed, and you, and you saw that, for example, not only progress, you saw a lot of progress in a lot of different ways, and it mimicked the progress in India, but it also, it also put a human face on the progress and it was cloaked in emotions. For example, when we had our meeting in the, I think in the second workshop of the village studies, and we went to another village in, in Andhra Pradesh, the women before would never speak in front of men. But this time when we had our village discussing, the, the women were much more talkative and vociferous than the men were. In fact, they were even shouting down some of the men. <laughs> so, so clearly things had changed. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with economic growth and increase in personal freedom in India over, over the time period. And particularly in the, in the mid-2000s, mid there, there was a tremendous amount of economic growth in India. Rapid takeoff. It was a unique exercise. As I look at my career, I think it's mo probably the most rewarding thing I've ever been involved in, associated with, the most important, most interesting, and most relevant in terms of agriculture development.